It's no secret that George R. R. Martin is influenced and inspired by history and the stories that came before him, but the fairy tale allusions in A Song of Ice and Fire are significant and speaks to the idea that Martin is writing modern mythology. In this video, I'll be sharing the parallels between Daenerys Targaryen, the Unburnt, and Cinderella, the Little Ash Girl. I will be using Daenerys' dialogue from the show, ending with se season 7 because we don't talk about season 8, and quotes from the books, as well as referring to the Brothers Grimm version of Cinderella and both Disney adaptations. I kinda already got into the subject during the live stream with symbolism extraordinaire Lucifer means Lightbringer, make sure you check out his channel, but I'm getting more in depth now. Young orphan girl who is raised by an abusive family member is treated like a slave. The girl dreams of happiness, home, and childhood. The girl is given gifts. The girl loses a shoe while running away. The girl uses those gifts to gain freedom and become queen. In case you forgot, Daenerys does indeed lose a shoe in a dance with dragons when Drogon shows up to the fighting pits. Let me go, Danny twisted from his grasp. The world seemed to slow as she cleared the parapet. When she landed in the pit, she lost a sandal. Girl is dressed in fancy clothes at an aristocratic event. Girl loses a shoe while running away from the fancy event and rides away on a chariot. Drogon happens to be the chariot in the Game of Thrones tarot deck as well. Girl sheds herself of her finery and remembers who she is. But I'm getting ahead of myself. In the Brothers Grimm version of Cinderella, there isn't a fairy godmother. Instead, the father brings the stepsisters fancy accessories but gives Cinderella a hazel branch. As per her request to bring her the first branch, he passes that knocks off his hat. To Cinderella he gave the branch from the hazel bush. Cinderella thanked him, went to her mother's grave, and planted the branch on it, and wept so much that the tears fell down on it and watered it, and it grew and became a handsome tree. Thrice a day Cinderella went and sat beneath it, and wept and prayed, and a little white bird always came on that tree, and if Cinderella expressed a wish, the bird threw down to her what she had wished for. Coincidentally, Daenerys has a fondness for a lemon tree that, see that she associates with childhood and happiness. In Daenerys' final chapter in A Dance with Dragons, she says, I was tired, Jorah. I was weary of war. I wanted to rest, to laugh, to plant trees and see them grow. I am only a young girl. The process that the grim Cinderella grows the tree and makes her wish comes true is similar to how Daenerys hatches her eggs. Over time, she sleeps with them, incubates them, and sometimes even cries on them. In a way, the dragons are her fairy godmother, as the tree is the little ash girls. No matter how your heart is grieving, if you keep on believing, the dream that you In season two, Daenerys tells the Spice King and Karth, I'm no ordinary woman. My dreams come true. And while that line wasn't in the books, it supports my idea that the greatest strength of these two women is their faith. In the original Disney movie, Fairy Godmother says, You can't have lost all your faith. If you had, I wouldn't be here. And here I am. And in season seven, when Daenerys meets Jon Snow, she has one of my most favorite lines in the entire series. Do you know what kept me standing through all those years in exile? Faith. Not in any gods. Not in myths and legends. In myself. In Daenerys Targaryen. Both characters' biggest strength is their faith. It is Daenerys' faith in herself that keeps her alive, and it is Cinderella's faith in her dreams that results in them coming true. Like magic spells, and of a sudden, it seemed to her that 
Jack's stepmother and stepsisters had indeed transformed her into a living creature of ash and toil. The 2015 Cinderella remake focuses on identity. When she meets the prince, who happens to be played by Richard Madden, aka Rob Stark, in the next scene after receiving her nickname, he asks, what do they call you, as in asking for her name. She responds, never mind what they call me. However, by the end of the movie, when the prince finally finds her, he asks her again, who are you? This time she responds, head high, with a smile on her face, I am Cinderella. Her following speech is an affirmation of her identity. Your Majesty, I am no princess. I have no carriage, no parents, and no dowry. I don't even know if that beautiful slipper will fit, but if it does, will you take me as I am? An honest country girl who loves you. This is similar to how Daenerys comforts herself during her wedding to Khal Drogo. I am the blood of the dragon, she whispered aloud as she followed, trying to keep her courage up. I am the blood of the dragon, I am the blood of the dragon. The dragon was never afraid. By embracing being Cinderella, the little Ash girl, she is taking the power away from her stepmother and stepsisters. She is breaking the spell. You could say she is embracing the cinders, just as Danny does when she births the dragons. After Cinderella claims that name and confesses to the king, she becomes queen and lives happily ever after. And while I'm sure many of us Danny fans would like her to have that fairy tale ending, and George certainly loves to use fairy tales in his writing, A Song of Ice and Fire is in no way a fairy tale. Okay, that's all the time I have for this video. Stay tuned for part two and the thrilling conclusion of Daenerys' Cinderella arc. Hello, friends. Uh, thank you for watching this far. I really appreciate it and I hope you liked my first new video. Um, I used to do YouTube and I'm trying to get back into it, um, but being a grown-up now it's kind of harder to do, but I really like talking about Game of Thrones and books and fairy tales, so I'm gonna try really hard to keep at it this time and I apologize for any issues with the video. I apologize for some audio, I'm sure there were some problems, I tried to make it all even, it's really hard because I recorded some of the video clips uh, from the movies and TV show just with my phone on the television screen, so that probably wasn't super fun. Um, so thank you for your patience, I promise I will get better, and one day when I have money I will buy a actual computer. and that has video so editing software on it so that I don't have to use iMovie on my phone. Thanks again for watching and if you liked this video and you want to hear more about fairy tales and A Song of Ice and Fire then make sure you uh, subscribe and like and share this video. Okay thank you, bye!